Hi, welcome to Richard Scale Modelling. For my next build, I'm going to be building this Ming Mark A Whippet British Museum Tank Scale 135. Now, um, this build is part of a diorama build, but the diorama is not in this video, it's in a previous video. Uh, I decided to split the two um, so it would be easier to look at. So, um, straight out of the box build on this, nothing major going on. Um, so, let's get, jump into it. So to begin with I've cemented the two halves of the hull together, two main halves and um, just making up all, on a couple of the little side panels that go on the end, the front and the rear before I move on to the turret. Now when you're doing the turret um, the instructions ask you to bend the plastic into shape. If you're not sure what angle, and if you think it's not too clear on the instructions, just bend it into shape on uh, the opening that's on the main hull, then everything will fit into place. So you gently bend it, just marry it up to the part, and you'll get the angle that you require. And carry on doing it uh, throughout the turret. You'll be working in the round as you put the different panels on. Once you done come to the top section of the turret, there's a little triangular piece that I'm putting in now. Just make sure that's 100% straight. Um, I didn't have it quite right in at this point, so I had to modify it as, as the glue was drying. But um, it has to be done 100% correct because the other panels will not fit in at the end if you don't get this part right. So once you're happy with the triangle apart, uh, the top just uh, places on without too much trouble. And once that's done, you can turn your attention to the bottom of the turret. And um, these are only the the side areas you, you're putting on, but these do help stabilise all the other parts you're putting on. Carrying on with the top part of the turret now. These are just the little features that it has, uh, the coverings for the manholes and so forth. And the lower part of the turret is uh, next. This is uh, the parts that will end up being a little bit tricky if you didn't get that triangle piece uh, incorrectly, the way it just slots into the turret. So once the lower part of the turret is made up, it's time to slip it in. And because it's all at different angles, this is where the difficulty happens. As you can see there, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting it in. And now that was my fault, nothing to do with the kit. But eventually got there. So slight adjustments were made and uh, I eventually got it into position. And once the main turret is dry, um, just uh, place in all the little um, covers for the manhole covers, gun ports and so forth. Test fit the turret before you put it in. Um, it should be, the fit should be really good if you got the angles right and then it was just a simple case of smith cementing it into place. Moving on to the base of the tank now and um, there's not much to do on here there's just one little panel that goes on before it slots onto the base of the main hull. So as you can see um, it slots in quite nicely and marries up um, without any difficulty whatsoever. The nose of the hull, the tank is uh, straightforward. They come in two sides, uh, supported by three beams, then closed up with, with panels. For the top of the cover for the nose, again you have to sort of bend and mold the plastic into position. Um, there is a line that goes up right across, so it makes it easier. And you just what I did was just put it on top and bent it on through. And while the nose was drying, I moved on to putting in the radiator vents onto the side of the hull. These are all preformed, you don't have to make them up. I moved on to the guns and armaments. Uh, they were mostly painted in gunmetal uh, Tamiya X10. 
for the exhaust port so the the muffler part was painted in Rebel Aquacolor 314 which is beige and the uh, the actual metal parts were painted in the Tamiya X10 gun metal and it was time to um, assemble the guns in, in the gun ports they're just a little uh, cyclo disc that you put onto the gun uh, for fitting into the port I didn't wait until the glue was 100% dry on this and um, I wanted it so I had a little bit of movement before um, popping in the guns but they fitted perfectly before putting in the exhaust ports I, I just painted the surrounding area with the base colour of the tank which is Rebel Aqua colour number 46 native olive and once it was dry it was time to pop it in you may notice the uh, colour chart I've got on top of the screen there that's just a little Revell colour chart that I use for um, matching up colours and whatnot. I I have one for Humpro and Tami as well. Um, moving back to nose gun, time to fit it. The straightforward um, lock in. There's a little bracket that uh, goes inside of. We moved on to the wheels. There's quite a few to make up. The first lot you have to make up ten. Then there's um, another lot is fourteen. Then there's another lot for eighteen. So quite a lot of work. Um, but there. A basic wheel, simple to put together, two discs and the centre part. So I'm waiting for the wheels to dry, so I thought it was a good time to start uh, putting some paint on. So at the bottom, well well over really, it's the um, Revel Aqua number 46, which is uh, a NATO olive. And now the first coat's on, it's back to the wheels. And then it's back to the tank and putting on the second coat. Now you really can't see the wheels once the tank's assembled but I decided to very roughly paint them anyway. Um, the reason for that is sometimes you can glimpse them. So uh, it was just a rough coat of paint, nothing too special. And the last of the wheels are the drive wheels to be done. And now preparing the um, track panels to receive the wheels. It's a good uh, time at this stage as well to paint the other parts of the side panel that the tracking wheels are going to go onto. It just saves a lot of time and waiting down the line. So the base colour is going to go on first which is the number 46 from Revell. And once it's all dry it's time to place the wheels onto the housing. Now careful when you're placing these wheels on, they go in a certain order. Um, there are smaller ones, there are bigger ones, but it's all very clearly marked out of the instructions. If you can't quite get them on, just run your knife uh, around inside them and uh, they'll slip on quite easily. And for the last wheel, just the drive train to go on. Now the side of the track uh, panels, they have the red and white flashes that get painted on. There's no decals for them so yeah, if you want to put them on you, you'll have to paint them on. Um, I decided to do them by hand so, um, just because I thought it would look better so uh, it's Rebel Aqua number 5 for the white and then Rebel Aqua number 36 for the red. So that's this is the red going on. It's um, as I said it's uh, freehand. Just pick a point and then just throw your paintbrush down and you'll get a semi-even line. Um, I don't think it works if it's too crisp. But th there's parts on this anyway, I mean, it's very difficult to mask off. So you may as well do it freehand. On to the tracks. Um, now initially I painted them in uh, a colour that I made up. Um, then I decided it would be better if it goes on from a steel background. So um, I painted the background in Rebel Aqua number 91 which is steel. Then I moved on to my own colour. Now this is a mixed up colour. Um, it, it's a, a sort of metallic -y brown. Um, like a deep titanium steel but uh, more brown than that. 
I, I used um, various colours to mi mix up. I forgot to write them down so I can't tell you what they are. But it was basically brown, chrome silver and um, a little bit of green. Onto the other half of the trap panel and um, the little wheels go in just a slot, slot on. Now it tells you not to glue but it's very difficult to to get them in position. Um, if you do want a freewheeling uh, track don't glue them but um, I wasn't bothered so I glued them. So that goes in and uh, this little part here is the tanks designed for anti-mud from stop, uh, clogging in the wheels. It's quite ingenious it's just a, a little chute that drops off the wheels and pops out the side of the tank. And once it's all dry uh, just in case I'm marrying it up from the points of the wheels to the other side and just pops in. The top grate goes in and that's uh, for holding the track into position. Make sure you get it into the grooves in between the actual two valves of the track. So now it's all painted, it's just time to pop them in and then just some clips to hold it into position. For the track links, uh, once they're dry, they, they just push in um, to hold. You don't have to put any glue. Um, there's little uh, brackets and they do just hold together. And once you've done a line, uh, it's just a matter of putting them on. Now, uh, I found in the end, doing it in one line like this um, can be a little bit tricky getting them to meet up. So as you can see I'm picking up and taking off camera there just to have a look. Um, so for the second track I put them in individually. Now because it's a static model and it's not free moving I glued four or five little bits in at once uh, before moving on to the next section of the track. And once it's all on just um, slot it into the the holes and, um, and it's on. It's easy as that really. So once uh, both track walls are on it's time to put on any other little bits and pieces so there's a spanner that goes on, some piping and um, extra tracks as well. And then once things are on it's uh, time just to touch up any parts of paintwork. The extra track lines are gone, I've painted in the same way as I painted the main track, so silver is the base and my colour that put on. Uh, the other side there has uh, little brackets which go on to the base colour of the tank and these just saw slot on little rails which are moulded onto the actual hull. For the tow cables um, it comes with an actual piece of little string rope that you put on. So I'm just securing it to the main hook with a bit of super glue and then uh, putting it on. Now it's one big thing so you have to cut it to length. I just fold it in half and cut it. Um, just be careful with the length though. Um, I cut it too large and had to take it all off again and redo it. Onto the decals. There's not many decals to this kit. Um, three or four really, uh, depending on which um, pattern you, you're going for. I forgot to paint the red and white flash of the um, nose on the tank, so um, I put that in now. Again, simple case of uh, just freehanding uh, painting here. The red and white uh, covered the, the green surprisingly well. Now this kit does come with four figures, which uh, I decided to do. Sometimes I don't do them, but since I'm putting this into a diorama, I decided uh, to have a go at them. So initially I'm painting the, um, the the heads and hands in Revo Aquacolor 35, which is flesh. So painting these figures, um, for the weapons I use a Tami X10 gunmetal uh, for, the, for the main barrel. And for the um, butt of the rifle, I use Rev Aqua 382, which is a wood brown. For the main uniforms, um, the the waistcoat and that 
was done in a Revel Aqua 8 to 6, which is khaki, and the uniform, the, the, the green uniform, was done in a lighter version of the Rebel 46 uh, Neo Green and, and that was uh, just a, a bit of a watered down version and for the straps and um, belts I used Rebel Aquacola 88 which is a leather after I caught a clear varnish I uh, weather started weathering the tank which I used Tamiya's Weather Master C, the gunmetal component, and then moved on to Weather Master E, and that was the green component of that one, to highlight the tank. But now that everything's dry, it's been weathered, it's time to put on the uh, matte coat, which is Newton and Windsor, or Windsor and Newton even, matte coat. And once the um, varnish was dried it was time to put on the cables which is the last thing to go onto the tank before I finish off the figures. So the simple case of assembling the figures and um, done them off camera and um, it's just a matter of cementing the parts together nothing too major and then it's uh, once overall together it was just uh, a touch up and paint. I didn't go into great detail with the paint that's why I haven't really shown you much. Um, I'm not a great painter of figures as well truth be told. So it, it's, a, it's a fair approximation. So that actually brings the build to a close. Um, mine do very good kits and this uh, little whippet was an outstanding kit to build. Um, again it was designed for experienced and non-experienced builders um, you can really get your teeth into it and have a great kit at the end of the video there's going to be a slideshow show as always but it's actually two parts really it's the part with the tank on its own and the part with it sitting in its diorama check out the diorama i video uh, i did before this it matches up with this one or check out my other videos as well but for now thanks for watching bye bye